we're asked to use the adjoint method to find the inverse of the given matrix. The formula for the adjoint method to find the inverse of a matrix is shown below, where if we let A be an invertible n by n matrix, then A inverse is equal to one divided by the determinant of matrix A times the adjoint of A, where the adjoint of A is equal to the transpose of the cofactor matrix. Let's set this up on the next slide. Let's first find the determinant, which I have up here in the upper right hand corner. The determinant of the two by two matrix is equal to negative three times negative five minus negative two times one. Simplifying, we have positive 15 plus two, which is equal to 17. Next, we need to find the cofactor matrix, which means we have to find the cofactor for each entry in the two by two matrix. The cofactor of A sub I comma J is equal to negative one raised to the power of I plus J times the corresponding minor. To find the corresponding minor, we eliminate row I on column J and find the determinant of the resulting matrix. To begin, cofactor A sub one comma one is equal to negative one raised to the power of one plus one times the corresponding minor. To find the minor, we eliminate row one and column one Notice how this results in a one by one matrix with an entry of negative five, and therefore the minor is the determinant of the one by one matrix. And the determinant of a one by one matrix is always the entry itself. Simplifying, we have the square of negative one, which is one, the determinant is equal to negative five, and therefore the cofactor is one times negative five, which is negative five. Cofactor A sub one comma two is equal to negative one raised to the power of one plus two, times the corresponding minor. To find the minor, we eliminate row one, column two, which leaves us with the one by one matrix with an entry of one. The minor is a determinant of the one by one matrix. Simplifying, we have the cube of negative one, which is negative one. The determinant of the one by one matrix is equal to one, and therefore the cofactor is equal to negative one times one, which is negative one. Next, we have cofactor A sub two comma one, which is equal to negative one raised to the power of two plus one times the corresponding minor. To find the minor, we eliminate row two, column one, which leaves us with the one by one matrix with an entry of negative two. The minor is equal to the determinant of the one by one matrix. Simplifying, we have the cube of negative one, which is negative one. The determinant is equal to negative two, and therefore the cofactor is negative one times negative two, which is positive two. And finally, we have cofactor A sub two comma two, which is equal to negative one raised to the power of two plus two times the minor, which is the determinant of the matrix formed after eliminating row two and column two, which gives us a determinant of the one by one matrix with an entry of negative three. Simplifying, the fourth power of negative one is one. The determinant is equal to negative three. The cofactor is equal to one times negative three, which is negative three. Now that we have all four cofactors, we can form the cofactor matrix, where the first row is negative five, negative one, and the second row is two, negative three. And now to find the adjoint of A, which we need to find the inverse, we need to find the transpose of the cofactor matrix. To find the transpose of the cofactor matrix, we make column one of the cofactor matrix, row one of the transpose, which is the first row in the adjoint of A, and we make the second column in the cofactor matrix, the second row in the transpose, or the second row in the adjoint of A. So now we have all the information we need to find the inverse using the adjoint method. We need the determinant and we need the adjoint of A. Let's find the inverse on the next slide. Again, the inverse is equal to one divided by the determinant times the adjoint of A. And since the determinant is 17, we have one divided by 17 times the adjoint of A. Performing the scalar multiplication, in the first row we have negative five seventeenths, two seventeenths. In the second row we have negative one seventeenth and negative three seventeenths. Before we go, let's verify this using the Desmos matrix calculator. Let's enter the original matrix. Enter, click A inverse. Enter and convert the decimals to fractions, and we can see our inverse is correct. I hope you found this helpful.